What is vertical farming? The purpose of a skyscraper is to maximize space in cities by providing more space for workers or residents. The same purpose applies to vertical farming. Basically, vertical farming is growing crops by stacking them on top of each other. This results in significantly less land use than conventional agriculture and the practice of hydroponic farming. Some vertical farming companies even differentiate themselves by making land-based vertical farms. When did vertical farms start? The earliest known form of vertical farming is the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which is also considered the pioneer of hydroponic farming. However, the term vertical farming was coined only in 1915 by a writer named Gilbert Ellis Bailey. Then, according to a New York-based American Daily newspaper, vertical farming was first practiced in Armenia in 1951. And in 1999, Dr. A professor named Dixon de Spamir, along with 105 students, came up with vertical farming after considering the harmful effects of agriculture. But the first commercial vertical farm started in October 2012, when Sky Greens Farms first opened in Singapore. Sky Greens Farms opened with 120 aluminum towers 30 feet, 9.1 meters, high, that's as tall as two female giraffes lined up on top of each other. What are the advantages of vertical farming? A smiling man near a vertical farm. In addition to using less land, Vertical farming also uses less water. And speaking of water, vertical farming results in zero waste by reusing its water and nutrients. This farming method also reduces air pollution as it can be done in urban areas, meaning trucks are not needed to transport produce over long distances. Pesticides are also not needed for vertical farming, as vertical farms tend to be indoors that are pest-free and weatherproof environments. These two special advantages of vertical farming lead to better air quality, fresher vegetables, and less greenhouse gas emissions. However, the most prominent among all these advantages is that vertical agriculture can be more efficient than traditional agriculture. From where? Well, it plays a crucial role in meeting the increasing demand for food resulting from the increase in world population. What are the disadvantages of vertical farming? A person picking strawberries on a vertical farm. Lettuce for rich people, said an American journalist when he shared his thoughts on vertical farming. It actually makes sense because vertical farming products are more expensive than traditional agricultural products. Running a vertical farm comes at a heavy price because of the various extra costs you don't need with nature. Artificial lighting, which is used as a substitute for sunlight, is just one of these extra expenses. Remember when I said that because vertical farming is done indoors, one advantage of vertical farming is that it is pesticide-free? This advantage is ironically a disadvantage because indoor farming makes pollination difficult due to the absence of pollinators such as bees. The solution would be to manually pollinate the plants through manual pollination, which can be time-consuming and labor-intensive. Another point that limits the progress of vertical farming is that not all crops are suitable for this farming method. What is the best crop for vertical farming? Several lettuces on a vertical farm. Most vertical farming companies focus on growing leafy green vegetables, such as basil, lettuce, and cabbage, as they are in high demand and don't take long to grow. Also, some crops such as rice, potatoes, and wheat require more land area to grow. Therefore, crops that take up less space and take less time to grow are a high priority for vertical farms, as they are the most profitable to produce. But that doesn't mean companies aren't trying to plant these tough crops for vertical farming. Which celebrities have invested in vertical farming? Justin Timberlake invested in vertical farming. Celebrities like Justin Timberlake, Natalie Portman, and Jeff Bezos have invested in vertical farming companies. For the investment of Justin Timberlake and Natalie Portman, they invested their money in a vertical farming company called Bowery in New York. Bowery uses robotics and artificial intelligence to manage its farms, which raised $300 million in its third funding round in 2021. According to Bowery, multiple U.S.-based vertical farms can provide more than 47 million servings of leafy greens per year. 
Another vertical farming company that uses robotics and artificial intelligence to manage its vertical farms is Plenty, which Jeff Bezos invested in in 2017. The Amazon founder's investment contributed to the $200 million that Plenty raised that year. If you're wondering why they, and other vertical farming companies, are using robotics and AI for their vertical farms, the answer is pretty simple. Robotics and AI can manage vertical farms more efficiently than humans, as they can grow crops more accurately. Vertical farming is an innovative farming method that helps us conserve soil, water and air pollution. While it can solve many of the problems of traditional farming, it has its own problems and drawbacks. But overall, vertical farming is a form of agriculture that has the potential to revolutionize the way we farm and consume produce.